Thanks so much for tuning into this one. Um, this video is brought to you from me solving kind of my own problems. So basically I have a new hunting rifle this year and I don't have time before the season starts to create a new custom cut turret in time to go hunting. And I was thinking I really hate, cause I've been there before, messing around with a ballistic app or having something taped to your gun in the heat of the moment trying to dial a range shot so that you're not doing some Kentucky windage stuff and holding over. I know there's BDC reticles out there and scopes. Um, I personally just run a duplex in both of my main hunting rifles so this is the perfect solution for this. And what we're going to be creating is this. This firearm is clear pre-checked it before i'll even take the magazine out for all you crazy safety nuts about me being in my house with firearm but this gun is a 260 ai um it's been chambered from a 6.5 creedmoor barrel it's a custom tika it's been seracoded it's in a tika varmint stock and it has a 2 to 10 by 40 leopold very x3 ihd on top this scope um, really good for the money. It's really, really lightweight, which helps make this short little gun that much nicer to carry. Um, but it has uh, an adjustable turret on top. And the one really nice thing about these scopes is they do have zero stop. This solution will work for any scope that has a turret or not. You do not have to have an exposed one to do this. And what we are going to create is a hash marked turret that you can do in your kitchen or your living room any flat workspace you have with very minimalistic tools with all of your dope on there that you can draw by yourself in probably less than 10 minutes to make yourself that much more ethical when you're hunting so i myself in this particular turret that i made so far i'll show you guys in just a second it goes my zero is 100 meters and it goes all the way out to 650 i can get in one revolution on this rifle with this load i'm shooting a 143 eldx at 2985 um built that recently for this gun it really 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 likes them this thing will shoot lights out like sub moa all day long and i know the whole sub moa thing but this gun will literally shoot like 0.5 to 0.3 minute groups if you do your part i shot my two best groups i've ever shot with this thing it shoots lights out it is crazy um so that being said it's justifiable to put something that the rifle needs on it to make it more efficient and we're going to show you how to do that there's a couple different ways to do it this is the first one i ever made and it turned out awesome um i'm making three in this video three different takes on it um, I'm sure you can do it a million different ways, but this is just going to make you that much faster, that much better, and that much more of an ethical hunter when you're out and about. No stress. Everything is on the gun. You just range, dial, pull the trigger, and it costs you like five bucks to make at best. So let's get to the video and make you guys some brand new turret tags for your gun. Um, I know that there isn't there, eh, sorry. I know that there are other solutions to this. Obviously you can have a turret cut, but my dilemma is I reload. Sometimes I'll change bullets if I don't like them after a season. So instead of spending $80 every time you want to get another one of these, you can make one that'll last the whole season for five bucks. And it really is a game changer. It's sealed with tape, so it's not gonna come off. Um, it's resistant to weather to a certain extent. Snow, no problem. Really heavy rain will probably saturate it, but you'll still be able to read it. And if you don't have an exposed turret, you can take your turret cap off of a regular hunting scope and put it on the surface that would regularly just have your quarter minute marks for zeroing. So if you're out hunting, you can unscrew it chuck it in your pocket if you need to make a long shot and you have the time and dial to the exact range say it's 350 i personally like to shoot under 400 meters at game i think that's an ethical distance and even then if i can get closer i will always get closer but this is just going to give you 
that much of an advantage and it's very, very simple. As you can see with the turret installed on the gun, I mean, there's a little bit of parallax because of the way the camera's sitting, but all of the clicks do line up all the way around. So I can shoot all the way out to 650 and then I run out of elevation. So the reason I made this is because if I ordered one right now, because I didn't do one earlier this year, uh, I wasn't gonna get here in time for hunting. So I had to build my own. I think it looks pretty slick. It's really easy to read. Every minute of angle has a red dot on it. And I installed numbers on them in every two minutes, up to 14 minutes. And all of my yardages are highlighted with see-through markers I cut out and all the 50 yard markings, 250, 350, 450, all have a highlight tag. So if he's standing somewhere in between, you can just throw her there. If he's at three, 425 or 375, really intuitive, a little bit better than black and white in my opinion. Easier to see, pretty easy to make. Good upgrade to the, the old hunting rig. All right, guys, in this video, I'm going to be addressing what I would consider an issue or something that's always bugged the crap out of me when it comes to hunting rifles. Anyways, there are a handful of options on the market for replacement turret caps. I mean, Leopold's whole idea with this scope, it's a great scope. I absolutely love these pieces of glass with the locking dial, crystal clear glass quality out of these. HDs. They're pretty great in low light. I got no complaints with them other than the turret because I live in Canada, British Columbia. I'm an avid hunter. Me and my brother do a lot of backpack hunting where we can shoot at some extended ranges. I mean, a lot of the hunting that we would do locally, you'd be hard pressed to find a shot over 250. And when I say 250, I'm talking about meters. And the reason that I'm making this video is because these scopes are only offered with a yardage turret cap. And this would apply for yardage or not. I mean, I know you get a free one, but the issue is if you ever decide to change ammunition types or run a bullet that's heavier or anything that's gonna change your ballistic outcome to the solution, whether that's higher or lower velocity or a different loading from factory or you want to change it up for your hand loads, which is something that I do all the time. If you have to buy another one of these, it's like 80 bucks and maybe even more than that in Canadian dollars, but it just doesn't really seem worth it. So I came up with a solution to this and the solution is to just make your own goddamn turret cap. And it's pretty easy to do. I, this is the first one I've ever made. Um, it works perfectly fine. It has all of my dope on it. And now I'm gonna make one for this gun. So this is the rifle I'm gonna take hunting this year. It's a 260 AI custom Tika with an IVI 18 inch barrel. And it's shooting a 143 ELBX at 2895. Pretty spicy loading. It could have went a little hotter, but the seven mag kind of my favorite all-around cartridge um you can take anything with it it's great i shoot either a 160 or a 175 out of this gun so we're gonna make a turret cap for this thing because i know it's all fine and dandy to use ballistic apps and stuff but i can say from first-hand experience when i'm hunting it is a pain in the butt to go trying to remember what the and minutes of angle are for each distance when you're under pressure and you're excited or trying to like open a phone to get on a ballistic calculator. Um, so this is a surefire way to have it on your gun. It's not something that's taped to the stock. It's literally going to sit exactly where you need it. 
range the animal that you want to shoot. If it has to be fast, hopefully it's not, because it's better when it's not. Um, dial the turret, get settled in, and pull the trigger. And I only made it to ethical hunting ranges. I mean, this 260, I would consider this like a 400 meter gun. And I wouldn't even want to shoot much farther than that with it, just because of the foot pounds of energy that are sent there. I know there's a lot of 65 Creedmoor heroes out there that say they can shoot an elk at a million miles away with it, but in my opinion, it's just not right. Maybe step up to something like this. But um, this gun, I'll probably make the turret go out to about 600, because realistically, like that is a freaking poke and a half, and I would never try and take a shot that far, anyways. But it is nice to have it just in case you need it. Like, let's say you shoot an animal at 275 and you hit him bad because you were excited and jacked up and nobody is a perfect shooter. And that thing is getting away on three legs or going down a ridge or whatever, and you need to get another bullet and do him quick because he's getting away from you. You can dial out to four or five or 600 and shoot him again. So, supplies. Obviously a mint because I like those, but it's very simple to make. And what we're going to need is a set of calipers, the finest point pen that you can find. This one's a 0.3 millimeter fine tip. Um, regular black pen, a red pen, and like 0.8 tips. Um, you're going to need this guy, a little crafting knife. I picked up some spare blades for it. These I didn't end up using yet. You could use them. These are all just options. So... Basically, what I've done is these are just highlighting the yardages. They're made by Avery. These ones are transparent, so you can write underneath them, cut out the little pieces that you need to identify the range, and tape them over top. So I know a lot of you guys' head is probably scrambling right now thinking, hey, what the heck are you doing? Like, that's never going to work. It's just paper in the wilderness. Well, Gorilla Tape, best tape that there probably is, makes this crystal clear tape and if you put two layers of this on it one it's not going anywhere two it's not going to get beat up and even if the moisture does get into it and a ton of snow or rain when you come back from a trip that thing will still be legible it'll be dirty but you can just make another one because it's super cheap so this is basically a full size sheet of post-it um, paper so they would use this for making labels for shipping, and usually they come in smaller sizes. You can get them at Staples. Everything I got here is from Staples. So these are solid color tags that you made by this company, color coding tags for books. You can write on them. These are just different colors of highlighted ones. I was thinking I might use them for the in-betweens to differentiate, but I ended up using all transparent ones. And those are gonna be your highlighters. And I got this too, because it did help me to kind of trace out perfect little triangles, but I did about three of them. And in the end, I just ended up freehanding them because it was easier. So maybe don't get this, but you will need a good ruler and a good pair of scissors. And that is literally it. So you're talking maybe in total, if you have this stuff around the house, like you can go to Staples and buy a sheet of this for 10 cents. The knife would be a couple, three bucks. I mean, most people have a set of calipers kicking around if you're into firearms or machine work or anything like that. But even a half decent set of calipers is maybe $35, 35 to say about 70, 80 bucks. You can spend more obviously, but. Okay, so I'll show you what we have to do here and we'll get at it. So first things first, we gotta uninstall the turret. It's the second smallest size in a standard set of met or uh, standard Allen keys. Take that guy off, and we got to take some measurements. You're gonna want to zero out your calipers and move this dial exactly to zero. And we got to take a measurement. So. We're not, nor, there is a way, I guess, that you could measure the circumference of 
the entire turret and then mathematically divide it by the amount of numerical digits, in this case, clicks of MOA that go in the full circumference. But the easier way to do this, because we're not gonna be using a computer program, is to literally just hand bomb the tape on there. So the only measurement we actually need is this one. So we're gonna take a measurement from the edge of the flat surface with the markings to the opposite edge. Right there, basically. I'm just gonna make it a whole number. So we're sitting at 2.290 of an inch. That's what we have to play with here. We'll lock that in. So what we need to do at this point you could use the pen, but I don't really want to leave marks on my tag. So what I'm going to do is just line up the edge where I had previously got one. You could just use a straight edge, any straight edge. And we're going to make a little nick in the paper, just big enough so that you can see it. And I know that this bottom line is already squared true with a ruler. So then we're going to transfer another mark further over. And now line up your straight edge, or in this case, your ruler. And you're going to cut out this whole entire length. Longer than what you think you need. So I'm just going to transfer this bottom one a little bit longer. And a little more on this side. And once we get here, we're just gonna square up these ends. I'm just gonna run these freehand. Square off this end. And now we're gonna lift this whole piece up. Just need to get underneath it here, get it started. And this piece we're gonna end up throwing away. So this whole piece of paper is only here to do one thing. And this is to scribe over the marks that we need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the first mark after zero. I could make this turret or this tag go cover the zero, but I kind of like the idea of leaving it open. So I'm going to go to right there. And then we're going to wrap. I actually made this slightly too big but it's okay, you guys can see my struggles. You can always cut the next one slightly smaller. So I'm leaving the bottom edge with all of your minute, quarter minute marks all the way around the turret until we come back to the last mark before zero. So all I did here was make a little nick in the paper and now I'm going to just cut it square or close to square and fold this guy over to the last mark on either side of zero. So this one actually slid a little tiny bit as I was making it, but it's okay. We'll just account. It's so minor that it's not really going to matter anyways when you're using it. So now what you have to do once you have your template on here, this is just the way that I found was easiest, is you're going to sit here and literally go around the entire piece of tape and just dot the white or the white paper right above every single quarter minute mark. And what this is going to allow you to do is use your ruler after you transferred it to the main paper to make all of your quarter minute markings. So I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me mark all of these, but um, I'll get it done and we'll transfer stuff over. So I now have all of the corresponding markings going around the entire turret wherever there is a quarter minute adjustment. And the reason that I did this you don't have to do this. I'm going to show you two different ways that you can make this turret, but it, that allows me to do two things. 
one it makes doing this part way 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 easier because you don't have to try and match all of the distances with your calipers and try and individually space every single one of these that way you're basically just copy and pasting and tracing right on but the thing that this allows you to do when you're done making the turret is i go out and i shoot a fair amount so say i'm using my ballistic app and it's not just for hunting like if i was building this and i didn't shoot that much i wouldn't do this i would probably make this piece of tape shorter which i'll do after and only have the yardage indication marks and then give an indicator of small numbers as to what minutes are there just so that it gives you a good idea or you could just not do it at all and just run your yardage marks because realistically that's all you're going to need but this will give you from one minute probably all the way out to 18 minutes so with a seven rem mag i can shoot a mile or a kilometer with that or damn or wait i forget exactly what it is i can shoot a heck of a long way with 18 minutes way farther than i'm ever going to need to shoot at something but now what i'm going to do that we have this lined up so this piece of paper that i've taken off of the turret is the exact length from the very first quarter minute measurement right here all the way around to the next to the last one which is right there we're going to leave zero unexposed so i am now going to basically just transfer all of these marks with this pen as little hashes so the reason that the paper is here is if you look at what happens with when you use a pen it gives you a little blotch right as soon as you touch it and you want it to look clean so you don't do that you'll you don't start on your piece of turret paper with the fresh ink so you'll start on this piece of paper and just zip across and you get a nice crisp clean line shift over to the next one and same thing boom and you just repeat this for the entire process all the way down your turret now i know probably a bunch of you watching this are thinking man i do not have the patience for this good news is you don't have to i'm just showing you that this is a way to do this if you want to have the minute marks available on your turret because it is nice to have say you know that the animal that you're shooting at and you have time to deal with it is it like 430 yards or in this case 430 meters hold on it's gonna do this one right at the end so that's gonna be my last mark 430 meters you can open up your ballistic app if you have the time and dial to the exact quarter minute that you need to hit the animal which is a nice feature to have on your turret um Okay, so from this point forward, I will spare you guys the dread of watching this. And I'm just going to continue and make these marks all the way down. Spared you guys about three minutes of drawing little lines. But all of your quarter minute uh, hash marks are now applied to your new turret tag. So we're going to take this off. Sorry for the crappy camera. And you have these lines all the way down one side it doesn't really matter if you get it perfectly straight i mean it does help but when you're at this point of your revolution if you wanted to i could go back and make this but i'm not actually keeping this turret so i'm not going to be super perfectionist about this one i'm just doing it solely to show you guys what i'm making so with this turret this mark this very first mark at the end is going to correlate to those two positions on the turret that I showed you before. So we take our caliper measurement now and we're basically going to cut out a box exactly this dimension, maybe a touch smaller because I added a little big, and that is going to be our working space for what we're going to draw on here. Okay, now we have our little box. I just traced that out with my little exacto knife and the ruler. So at this point in the game, we got to identify where the minutes are. So because we're not starting 
from exactly zero or because we're starting from exactly zero and it's not actually a marker on our turret four marks over is our first minute of angle so this would be one we got two three and then we'll make our fourth one a bit taller just to signify it one two three two minutes and we're going to carry this on all the way down the line. So from this point, it's really just personal preference, but I think what I did on the last one is I didn't identify every single one. So I went two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. These translucent patches that I used last time are a little bit of a pain to cut out. So I think because we have a little bit more real estate on this turret, I'm going to use these ones. You can just draw right on these ones this time. Really easy to use, I think. So we're gonna make our markers now from 200 out to say seven or 800, depending on how far you wanna go. I'll probably go to about seven or 800, I guess. Okay, so we got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now you can choose to do whatever style you want. On the last one I did, I cut out triangles. On this one, I might just do straight lines to keep it simple. But the one thing I will, oh, maybe I'll cut triangles. I think they look better. The thing about cutting a triangle out is the tip of the triangle is going to reference one of these points exactly where you want it. So I think I'll do that. It's pretty easy. We're literally just going to take this knife, draw a triangle, cut off the top, and we're going to overlay it with your ballistic data on this turret. All I've done is cut out little triangles for every yardage. In this case, it goes out to 800 meters. Couldn't quite remember exactly what the seven did for minutes at a thousand, but I almost get there. 800 meters and change, one revolution with a 200 meter zero. So we cut out a bunch of triangles and overlaid them. So now what I'm gonna do, it's optional, you don't have to, but basically I'm going to put hash marks out of the same colored paper that corresponds with the number. So two, I'll probably pick green. So for 250, just to continue the color chain, but then it'll go 350, we'll sit right in between here as a yellow mark, 450, a blue mark, 550, a red mark, 650, a green mark, and so on. So we'll get that done and show you what it looks like. Okay, so now we have all the corresponding 50 yard increments cut out and attached to their corresponding hash mark. All that's left to do, take that up, wrap it around our turret, make sure the line's right up, and you're good to go. This really does highlight why I chose to use sticky back paper. There's no gluing, no nothing. You just line up the marks, take a measurement with your calipers. I actually shortened up this measurement by 20,000 to make it fit a bit better, but, and then apply all of your marks. So the thing that's gonna keep this thing in one piece is this tape. So I'll go ahead and tape this up and we'll trim the excess off and I'll show you a finished turret. Okay, so we have one full revolution and a quarter just to give it a little extra stick on itself. You have to be careful when you're putting this stuff on because you're really only going to get one shot at this. If you try and lift the tape up, um, it's going to peel off all these little markers. But all it's left to do is trim it up and we have a finished product.
Sorry for the crappy camera work, but this is kind of hard watching what you're doing and trying to work at the same time. But there you go. I think I kind of like the finished product on the clear ones better and they're also like a little bit easier to read. This is only the second one I've ever made, but it does work and it gives you all the data that you need. Let's do a function check. I have installed the turret back onto the scope. When it's trimmed up, it doesn't impede anything. You can rotate it all you want. You have all of your ranges on there. Pretty slick, really easy to do. You do not have to do it exactly the way that I have. I'm gonna show you one more way that I think would be really handy. This way I made all of my own markings. I'm gonna show you a way now that you don't have to do all of the tedious line work and just put your ranges on there. So in this method, way, way simpler. And a lot of you will probably like this because it really just solves the problem in probably about a minute and a half. It is super simple. So as long as you have gone out and collected your ballistic data, whether you have a chrono or whether you do reverse math to get your muzzle velocity and put all of your ballistic coefficient, your velocity and everything into a program, <coughs> sorry, and collect your dope, you can just cut a, the same exact length of strip that we've already done, but take some of the gap off so it leaves all of your factory minute of angle marks half showing. You can still read them, they're still easy to identify, but all you're gonna do now is just go through your app and reference exactly which hash mark you need to apply for all of your ranges and just write your yardages on there and tape it up after. I'll go ahead and do that and show you what it looks like when it's done. Okay, so here is the finished product on the 50-50. So as you can see, we're zeroed. It goes 250 to 300 because that's pretty negligible to have the 25 meter yardages in between. If you think it's in between, just do there. But every mark after three, it's in 25 meter indicated in blue. The 50s are in red and it goes all the way out to 800 meters. So if you want to do some plinking, shoot at 750, shoot at 765, 775, 800, and so on. Pretty slick, really easy to make. I think you guys will like having this on your rifle. This literally probably took me about five minutes to make. It is very simple. Go ahead and save yourself 80 bucks or change bullets whenever you want. If you want to hunt with different stuff, you don't need to spend a bunch of money on different turrets to go hunting or shooting or anything. Realistically, a little bit of tape, a couple of pens, a good knife and a pair of scissors, and you can make an infinite number of these right on your kitchen counter. This really is a arts and crafts project that you can make your own oyster. Um, it's going to be pretty durable in the field. You can get creative or less creative as you want with it. Like if you look between the two different turrets, oh, my hand is in the way. They are quite different in nature. I really do like the way that these clear overlays look though. It's nice, but this also will get the job done. Oh, one more tidbit. One thing that I totally forgot to mention is the beauty of this system is that on most hunting scopes, this one, the windage is obviously flatter because it's a side cap. But if you have cap turrets on a lot of different styles of scopes, your turret caps are gonna be a little bit deeper than what this Leopold has. They'll be more proud, they'll sit a little higher and they also have the exact same flat space that an exposed turret would have. So if you want to have a capped rangeable turret on your hunting rifle, it won't have zero stop. But one thing that you could do is make one of these on your standard everyday 3x9x40 hunting scope and tape it and put it on your rifle once it's zeroed. And if you have to make an extended range shot, instead of trying to mess around with BDCs or trying to 
guess using some Kentucky windage, be ethical, shoot like a real hunter and get the job done with the accurate dope that your rifle needs to provide an ethical kill as long as you do your part. Hope that helps you guys. Let's go hunting. Now that you've completed your arts and crafts project, to put it into perspective, very simple system to use. Firearm is clear. Oh, there's a gigantic buck, or in this case, there's a mountain goat. Oh, wow, range. Oh, he's at 425. We'll quickly turn that to 425. We'll cycle around. We'll aim at our new trophy. Bang, a successful kill. See how quick and easy that is, you guys? Turrets are awesome. Everybody should use them, in my opinion. They will save you a lot of time and hassle in the long run if you plan on shooting farther than like 300. So get after it, get it on your guns. I think it's a great thing for anybody to have. Thank you so much for watching. I know it'll help me this season take some great animals in the backcountry if I'm fortunate enough to get out there and find one. So this helped you out please leave a like or a comment maybe leave a photo of something that you did on your own with a twist on it this is totally just an idea for somebody to put on their rifle to help them out to make more ethical kills in the backcountry we'll catch you in the next one